get our uh, little Canadian tour divide going. Just short a few kilometers. <laughs> short a few kilometers for sure. Um, so the Cannonball 300 was created um, sort of out of necessity that I didn't have a whole lot of time off when I wanted um, to bike pack but over a weekend or an overnighter and really the only options available at the time um, were multi-day bikepacking trips uh, where you would have to take a week off or uh, several days off away from family um, so really it was important to create something that was um, more manageable for introductory level bikepacking. Yeah, so I wanted to do the Cannonball because, well, Mark asked me to come out and do the reroute um, and make a little video about it to kind of show off that you don't have to go far from home. So I just thought the Cannonball was a really cool way to see that part of Ontario that I grew up in and you skip over a lot of, but you can't really do that when you're on the strip. So you actually get to see some things that you wouldn't see in your own home communities. Yeah, there's definitely a lot of hurdles uh, into planning a trip like this. Um, with COVID, a lot of the camping was shut down, um, so we really had to wait out till either camping opened up, and then just also resources along the way, like uh, you know the late night pizza stop to help us get to mile 160. Right? I mean, we you want to have those options available so that way, um, if need be, you can you can use the local resources. So um, I was really interested in incorporating. Um, a lot of local sites. So the route goes through uh, not an extremely wilderness section of Ontario, but there's a ton of neat stuff, right? So there's um, the Hamilton to Brantford Rail Trail, which is a beautiful stretch. Um, going through Waterford, there's um, a gorgeous uh, view over a bridge. We go through um, Lakefront Trail um, between Port Dover and Dunville. Uh, the Welland Canal is phenomenal with the large freight ships it's something that i don't think anyone would expect to see on a bike packing trip is a freight ship um, vineyards out towards niagara um, waterfalls in hamilton like it's it's almost like a urban bike packing exploration it's it's awesome so some of the challenges that uh that we faced in planning this thing uh the ontario lockdown obviously killed all camp campsite booking for the next while and we had to wait wait that out and then uh challenges that'll be coming up is the fact that i haven't done a ride this long since february and that was on a trainer the last time i did it so it's gonna hurt well should we get pedaling yeah we should probably head out yeah we're already late <laughs> morning of the glutinous treats face. Come on. Give me the Stroop waffles. This, uh, is this worth the wait? What uh, what's what do you normally get? Oh, uh, to see whatever big stuff they have, or depending on the timing, you can just eat like full breakfast or whatever, right? Okay. I mean, we're at lunchtime now, so I don't know. Yeah. But, yeah, I don't know if people are getting like, lunches or. All right, I'll get the Hungarian kabata, please. Yeah, that's kind of what it seems like.
All right, so we got our first stop complete. Got the Windmill Bakery, Mark's favorite place, it sounds like. Yeah! <laughs> and we're uh, making our way to, was Waterford next or? Yep. Yeah, so we're making our way to Waterford. We are, what, 60K in of 150 now? That's right. So we got a ways to go still, but uh, I'm feeling pretty good. Mark, how are you, how are you doing? I'm surviving. Yeah, surviving? Surviving, yep. surviving? Yep. okay. I've got a backup fritter, so I'm good. <laughs> Seventy-one point three nine kilometers in like six hours. It's my fault for filming too much. So we're rolling up onto Simcoe now, and we've seen like twenty or thirty riders doing the Cannonball Three Hundred already. But they're all going for the one day. We're doing it in three because we are loaded. I mean, I, st I still go to the Arbor, but I have a theory that every year their gauge of the hot dog decreases in size and the bun just still stays the same. So right now, when you get it, you just get a bun with toppings and you can't even see the hot dog, so. But. So this was a better I, choice. I, I, I may get sued after that comment when it goes. <laughs> you think you'll be good for, um Yeah, it's so calm today. Yeah. There's uh hard to find a spot to jump in. I know. So we've just passed through Port Dover and it's just open country road. We've had our first little glitch. Uh, I had the drone up over a solar field. I was getting a great shot and uh, then I went to bring it back home and it was getting low on battery but it was fine to make it all the way back but the drone wanted to fly back home which was in the opposite direction so I just had to emergency land it on the side of the road and Mark was pedaling ahead of me to actually go pick up the drone first but he pedaled right by it and I think he's still looking for it. Found it. Oh yeah. That's good. It was, it was right here. Oh, and I, I rode right by it? I was trying to call you because you rode right by it. But it's okay, I was talking to this guy. He's got a oh. he's got a drone too, so he was just He waved at me. So maybe that's why he was waving at me. <laughs> Probably yeah. I was trying to call you too. I was like, Mark, you just passed it, you just passed it. Yeah, I'm like, fuck man, we're gonna spend all night trying to find this drone. Like because of no. tall grass and like the whole solar farm. No, I was I just, as you were riding away too, yeah. I was trying I was trying to say I landed it right on the side of the road. Oh, okay. So it's like right there. And I thought for sure you would have seen it like as you rode yeah. by, but you must have been like I mission. I was because I remember you kept saying over and over again, it's oh, it's heading back to like. The... No, so I cancel it and no. then land it. And then you'd are, I was like, oh, I was like, okay, I landed it. Well, I'm but you're glad. gone. I'm glad you're gone. we saved the drone. Never so, leave a man or drone behind. Yeah. yeah. No, that was, uh, I mean, that was entertaining for a bit. Okay, we should probably keep going. Yeah. Aside from the smell, it's a pretty nice stretch of uh, road right alongside the waterfront. Imagine being that age and becoming a meme that big. As Mark just called it, we just experienced some trail magic. Well, I guess road magic, or we've been on a road forever. But uh, just happened upon an ice cream truck. Myself a great grape slurpee. Yeah, we found the grape. <laughs> Wasn't the grape pop that we were looking I know, for? Craving grape but soda all day. Pretty solid. This is what the, the trip is about though. Unexpected happiness. Alright, we are on a race to the beer store in Dunville now. We got about 45 minutes before it closes and we still have about 25k to cover. I'm losing my voice. 
<sighs> so we're pushing 27k an hour to get there hopefully beer be nice oh yeah <laughs> josh is gonna get us there <laughs> i'm working on it a little update we're both hurting now i don't know if the beer store is happening mark got a fire in him we started pedaling hard thinking we could make it to the beer store for eight I just randomly thought I'd ask a guy that was in his driveway how close it was and he answered with, it's closed. <sighs> My purple slush will have to do. Is this still cold? Yeah, it's awesome. Oh, yeah. sweet. I think the snack bag kept it warm or cold. Okay. Who knows, maybe we'll find a patio or on the campsite we'll have a great neighbor. You never know. True. You never know where trail magic will happen. Like a cheers. Oh, yeah. Like, yeah, like, oh, look at this. <laughs> cheers. Cheers. Look what we found. So it turns out, beer store is closed, but we found one patio left open. One on, table on the patio. One table on the patio that's open, and uh, opening weekend, you just gotta go to Dunville to find a place that's not rammed. Still kind of is. We made it. Now to find our campsite. Site. Site number one of two. Gotta there. find it. Do you have uh, a knife or scissors or anything like that? No, just that multi tool. That, like uh, all my rubber, like they're all, they don't work anymore. Oh no, so oh to, like, yeah. To, like shove them in there. battery bank's good though because it actually has USB-C connection which I don't have in my current one. So. Good morning world. Yeah. How's it going? How did uh, how'd, how'd you feel last night sleeping? Uh, sleeping? Oh, I slept pretty rough. I uh, I got super sunburned, so I was wrestling all night. Plus, we had uh, some partiers next door. They uh, stayed up to 3 a.m. yelling, doing shots. You know, the huge. So I guess we're coming up to the Welling Canal now. It's nice to get some smoother road for a bit and another gorgeous sunny day. Oh, yeah. 
you have. The, the like curl? Perfect. Yeah, Frau Curlic <laughs> from Austin Powers. It's amazing. Ridden through Port Colburn, had a coffee. Stopped a couple times to see some of the ships passing by. We followed one ship for like 20K probably. And uh, now we're going through Lock 7 in uh, Thorold. What's next? What made you like stop here and be like, okay, this is the cannonball? Uh, I probably rode by it like you're 10 like, times or something like that. You're like, this is a guy on a bike. And I, I would always stop here and look at it and read the little story. And then I went and Googled more about the story. And I thought, that's awesome. Like it actually means something when we ride through Thorold for cyclists, they used to make a bike here. Okay. So, Cole's notes, uh, don't quote me on this, but uh, I think in sometime in the 1800s, they made the cannonball bicycle for like two or three years uh, in Thorold. Uh, yeah. Awesome. So they actually made bikes here. Yes. And I think here it says, have your kids not buy it at an American city, <laughs> buy it locally. And we're still trying to do that now. Yeah, that's right. Hundred years later. Yeah. All right, so we're now on the new rerouted section of the Cannonball 300, and uh, Mark just pointed out that it goes right by a hydroelectric dam through the uh, gorge here. Nice little feature to, to kind of see as you come out on some of the mountain bike trails. And we have some more mountain biking to do. Yeah, so we're taking, uh, we took this uh, path along the river and it turns into the lower Seacord Trail. So that's what we're taking, it turns into more of a single track, which is a lot of fun. Uh, we're both on gravel bikes with 40 plus C tires and we've both been okay so far. So yeah, we'll see what kind of trouble we get ourselves into. All right, drop it in on the Laura Secord tra trail, trail, nice little rock over. So we're just following the dam and it's a little bumpy. Got the big camera just kind of swaying off me. Whew. Well, I hope you're enjoying the video so far, and I just wanted to tell you two things. First up, this section of trail on the Laura Secord is gonna look a little bit different. Nice thing is you're not actually gonna to have to hike your bike up this section of trail, right? Ish, ish, ish. You might have to, you might have to. I haven't done the official reroute of the ride yet. We, we didn't make things easy. Okay, things didn't get easier. I'm lying about all of that. Ride's gonna look a little bit different, but uh, if you are liking this video and you wanna know a little bit more about the Cannonball 300, I'm doing an interview with Mark here who actually made the Cannonball 300. So stick around and click the link at the end of this video to go straight into that interview and we'll, we'll, we'll see you over there. Also, if you wanna like and subscribe, that'd be great too. Okay, we'll, uh, we'll go back to the video now. I'm gonna stop. Lead the way. Oh yeah, okay. So what can we expect on this little section? I'll keep it a secret. Ooh. Yeah, I want to see Josh. Africa. That was a great downhill. Yeah? You, you think it's a good part of the route? I think that was a really fun part of the route. Cool. I think, uh, oh man, I'm sweating like crazy. I think you need some mountain bike skills. You definitely want that, but that was good. It's uh, bumpy. That's bumpy. Yeah, I'm feeling a little bit in the hands and the wrist, but yeah, the fun outweighed the, the cons on that one. So what do we do? We 
finally have a good downhill heading down to our last night of camping. And I'm probably gonna have to put you back away because this looks steep. Today was a struggle. We uh, did the reroute today. And what do you think about the reroute? I think the reroute's good. I think there's one trail on the reroute that won't make the cut. Yeah, one. And I, I'm sorry, Josh, for making you go. It's okay. The, the trail that we're talking about, I was totally fine with. Aside from the fact that I lost my sunglasses and sunscreen. And shook ourselves to pieces. And yeah, we rattled our brains pretty good on gravel bikes when we were basically mountain biking. But it was fun. It's all part of the adventure. And we got to our very luxurious campsite in Jordan Valley. Uh, we have firewood, fire pit, fresh cut grass, which is what we did not have in Dunville. And I have a, a fresh sunburn for today. And maybe a thunderstorm. And maybe a thunderstorm now. All right, so now we have hail. How big of a piece did you just put? Uh, size of a penny. Yeah, that's decent. What was the uh, highlight of your day as we dry off all of our stuff? Highlight of my day. Uh, I actually really liked the lower state core trail. I mean, I didn't really mind pushing my bike up uh, steep stuff, but I, I actually really liked that, that trail. Um, good company, Josh, like, dialed back the hurt a little bit today which was nice because i was hurting a lot more today i think um what else oh we had really good coffee oh in, yeah um in port Colburn. do you remember the name of the i like the variety like we mm. started the day off at our kind of crappy campsite last night yeah then we go straight into a great kind of farm country gravel mm section that was just rail old rail trail a little bit rougher shape and then and yeah welland canal was really cool following that for 40 50k and and even just seeing how the canal like splits off so that people mm -hmm. can just go rowing or swimming or whatever else we can dunk our head in the water there uh and then yeah then we did some mountain biking <laughs> <laughs> and then uh road sprint to our site it was a pretty short day um but i think we both wanted to get a more of a camping element to this trip was yeah. the first day was such a an effort that we showed up late at night no fire no relaxing um we didn't really get to enjoy some of the aspects of bike packing so tonight was good to yeah. have a shorter day so we got in at six seven and uh had a fire had a, had a bit of a downpour of rain first yes which that's is right but uh, I mean, it was came in clutch that Brody lives so close. My brother was able to come out and bring some beers out to us. That was pretty sweet. Hung That's out sweet. for a bit. I think that beer is putting me to sleep. Brody, thank you for coming yeah. through with that beer. Yes. Was, uh, I, otherwise, we would nonstop talk about beer, I think. <laughs> <laughs> and not had any. You'll get DQ'd. You Thanks, it. Brody. morning last night was a rough sleep we uh well my stuff was soaked my mattress deflated on me because i didn't close the valve totally and the coyotes were up early hunting at four in the morning but it's uh quarter after six now we're gonna try and pack up and start pedaling because we're getting rain all day today so it'd be great to get home and not get too too soaked I think we're gonna get wet again though. Yeah. Alright Mark, how are the legs? Legs be okay, ass is sore. Can't wait to get some coffee. Coffee? 
and we need to get somewhere before it starts raining. We're expecting rain and we have 20 minutes of climbing, says Mark. And I think we're doing our first one. <laughs> This is breakfast of champions right here. Yes. Not a deal. Hey Mark, you know what you really need? <laughs> <laughs> the fifth person to tell me, an e-bike. Clouds don't look great. They look less dark than what they were before, but still guaranteed for rain. Got the raincoat, hopefully the drone and the big camera are okay. We'll see. Oh yeah, they're trying to just get the birds off. A little, uh, a little muddy today, but yeah, a little soggy. That was a good section, though. A little mountain bikey. Then you said the other one's right there. We're skipping that because we're already getting wet. What does it say? Oh, 600 calories. <laughs> That's pretty good. I'm trying to not make any sudden turns on this wood. Oh, it's a little overgrown. really dark because I still have a very dark ND filter on and hopefully you can hear me with this wind. We're uh, coming down the escarpment trail, wrapping up our ride. We got a few city streets to pass through, back on the rail trail, over to, uh, I think I'm going to Domestique for some coffee because I'm cold. And we are cruising home. Oh yeah. Time like we saw you three days ago, right where we left. Oh my god, I do like ending here because you can then just fall asleep underneath the picnic table. <laughs> it's done. My knee is about to blow up, so I'm glad. Mm, time to dry off, dry off, yeah. See if I have trench foot and uh, get a good coffee and a real meal. Yeah, today was Snicker bars, a uh, fake bread that you had. Yeah, that was that was really and it. tons of shop walks. Yeah. Today was uh, basically a panic day just to try and beat the rain. Just, Did, were we successful? Just put off all creature comforts. We were successful for 30 minutes, so <laughs> I know we spent what we spent like three hours drying stuff by the fire. Yeah. We had half an hour of dry stuff, so. Oh well, that's it. That's uh, that's all till the next one. Oh, all right, mid ride. Very tired, Josh here. Uh, I just like to say, if you like this video, if you like my content. Please like and subscribe. Uh, it means a lot because uh, these take a lot of time and effort to do and Mark would appreciate it because I keep making him turn around and take shots over and over again. We're also doing the cannonball in three days. So that's a long time. 